All right, and welcome to Solving Absolute Value Level 2. Okay, so you'll notice here the difference is that instead of just having the absolute value of r equals 10, now we're including um, a minus 7 inside the absolute value bars. Okay, so does this really change much? And the actual answer is no. So the rule of thumb is whenever my absolute value bars are completely by themselves, there's nothing in front and there's nothing being added over there off to the side, well, then we get to treat this the same way we have been. We're going to do the split. Okay, so I'm going to write the word split. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, we have this r minus 7. Oh, I'm sorry. There are no absolute values. So basically what we're going to say is when we have the absolute value bars by themselves, we split this into saying r minus 7 equals positive 10 and r minus 7 equals negative 10. So remember, we always take our constant and we set it to the positive and negative version of itself. That's uh, because we don't know if what was on the inside here was either equal to a positive 10 or equal to a negative 10 because those absolute value bars make everything positive. Okay, so what gets rid of this minus 7? Well, plus 7, plus 7. Okay, that zeroes out. We get r equals 10 plus 7, which is 17. And over here, it's actually pretty cool because you always wind up doing the exact same operations. What's the opposite of minus 7? Well, it's plus 7 and plus 7. Okay, and we get r equals negative 10 plus 7, negative 3. Oh, very cool. Nice and easy. Two solutions. Now, what I'm going to also introduce in this video is something called testing out your solution. So let's go back to our original uh, equation. We have the absolute value of r, but let's just test out 17, okay? So we know that r in one case is 17 minus 7, absolute value equals 10. And let's see, we have the absolute value of 17 minus 7, which is 10. And check this out. The absolute value of 10 is equal to positive 10. Oh, hey, our solution checks out. And in fact, if we plug in negative 3, we would get the same thing. All right, let's go ahead and try out a second example. Okay, for example two, I made it a little bit trickier. I put a coefficient in front of x. However, I want you all to notice that on the left side of the equal sign, these absolute value bars are still by themselves. There's no coefficient in front. And there's nothing being added or subtracted at the end. Okay, so at this point, what we can do is we can go ahead and do our split. We'll split this positive 12 into both its positive version and its negative version. And then we're going to set this 3x plus 7 equal to the positive and 3x plus 7 equal to the negative version. And y'all, I said y'all that the solving was the same for both. Check it out. The opposite of plus 7 is minus 7. And zeroes out. And I have 3x is equal to 12 minus 7, which is 5. And how do I get rid of the 3? Well, I can divide both sides by 3. And my first answer is x equals 5 over 3. Okay, over here, I can do minus 7, minus 7, that zeroes out. Add 3x is equal to, and y'all, what is negative 12 minus 7? Well, that's going to be negative 19. And now, we divide both sides by 3, and we get x equals negative 19 over 3. Okay, now, for this case, we can test these out, and it won't actually be that difficult. All right, let's, let's see what I mean. Okay, so I'll kind of do my little testing ground over here. And let's say with this, we have the absolute value of three parentheses. Let me put this in blue. Uh, why don't we test out the negative solution? Negative 19 over three, close parentheses. And then we can go ahead and do this, plus seven, plus seven, close the absolute value bars, is equal to 12. Remember, that's an absolute value bar there. Now the cool thing here is that anytime you have the whole number is the same number as the denominator, when we do a whole number times a fraction, remember they actually both divide to 1. It's almost essentially like they cancel out. We have negative 19 plus 7 inside our absolute value bars is equal to 12. Now let's see, negative 19 plus 7 is actually negative 12 inside the absolute value bars, and it should equal 12. And y'all, the cool thing is absolute value bars make everything positive. So the absolute value of negative 12 is positive 12. Check it out. This solution works out. 
and this one will as well. All right, y'all, I'm going to show y'all a, a non-solution, and then you can go tackle these on your own. Okay, example number three, non-solution, super easy. Let's say we have, um, oh, absolute value bar of 3 over 2x minus 18 over 11, close absolute value bars. That looks pretty gross, right? But if I set this equal to negative 2, what's the answer? Well, remember, y'all, absolute value bars can never produce a negative. And so you would say, hey, this is no solution. Easy, easy, easy. All right, y'all, go ahead, finish taking your notes, and I'll catch y'all in our next level.